distance between two points. So we wish to consider the problem of finding the distance between the points A and B where A has coordinates 4, 1 and B has coordinates 2, 5. So let's just mark those points. So A is at 4, 1 and B is at 2, 5. And we wish to find the distance between these two points. So this distance here, the direct distance. Now, if we have a little think about this, actually, there's a fairly obvious right-angled triangle happening here, for which we know the vertical and horizontal lengths, and therefore we could use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length AB. So, obviously, B has an x-coordinate of 2, and A has an x-coordinate of 4, so the distance between those we can see quite clearly in this diagram is 2, but we could also calculate it. It's quite literally the difference between them, so 4 minus 2. Um, and the vertical distance, B has a y-coordinate of 5, A has a y-coordinate of 1, so the distance between 1 and 5 is 4. Again, we could calculate it by doing 5 minus 1. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem here to find the distance from A to B. So AB is the hypotenuse, which means that AB squared is equal to 2 squared plus 4 squared. So 4 plus 16, so 20, which means that AB is the square root of 20, which isn't a simplified third. So 20 is the product of 4 and 5 which means we can break it up as the square root of five mul sorry, square root of four multiplied by the square root of five, and hence the length from A to B is two root five units. So let's think about this a bit more generally to come up with a formula, but essentially finding the distance between two points is an application of Pythagoras' theorem. So here we have two points, two general points A and B, where A has coordinates x1, y1, and B has coordinates x2, y2. Note this isn't x squared, y squared. This is just the second x coordinate and the second y coordinate. So it's a subscript, not a superscript. So again, we want to use Pythagoras' theorem. So we want to form that right-angled triangle. And obviously we're going to need expressions for the horizontal and vertical distances. So we know that the x-coordinate of point A is x1 and the x-coordinate of point B is x2. And so the distance between these is going to be the difference between them. So x2 minus x1 will give us the distance between them. Similarly, the vertical distance between A and B. A has a y-coordinate of y1. B has a y-coordinate of y2 and so the vertical distance between y1 and y2 is y2 minus y1. And so we can use Pythagoras' theorem in this right angled triangle. Again AB is the hypotenuse so AB squared is going to be the horizontal distance squared plus the vertical distance squared. And so the distance between two points A and B is the square root of the difference between their x-coordinates plus the difference between their y-coordinates. Try not to remember this as a, try not to have to feel that you have to learn this formula by rote. There's a lot of subscripts and superscripts and squares and square roots and it's ugly and it's complicated. You've just got to remember that it's Pythagoras' theorem. And so really all we're doing is taking the square root of the difference between the x-coordinate squared plus the difference between the y-coordinate squared. Okay? So let's have a look at a couple of examples. So the distance between A and B where A has coordinates negative 2, 3 and B has coordinates negative 4, negative 3. So we know that AB is going to be the square root of the difference between the x-coordinates. So I'm going to have negative 2 minus negative 4 plus the difference between the y-coordinates, so 3 minus minus 3. So 
So we're going to have the square root of, that's negative 2 plus 4. So that's going to be 2 squared plus, ne we've got 3 minus negative 3. So 3 plus 3, so 6 squared. Now I encourage you to be consistent with how you use your coordinates. Now it didn't doesn't matter whether I do negative 2 minus negative 4 or whether I had done negative 4 minus negative 2. At the end of the day I'm going to get the same result. So doing the subtraction the other way would have given me negative 2 in here. Um, but whether I'm squaring positive 2 or negative 2, I'm still going to get the same result. So because of the squares, it doesn't matter which way around I do the subtraction. It also won't matter if you mix up the subtraction. So if you do x2 minus x1 in one bracket and y1 minus y2 in the other bracket. Um, but I encourage you to try and start to be consistent with how you use x1, y1, etc. Um, just when we come to looking at midpoints and gradient in particular. Okay, so we've got square root of 2 squared, so that's 4 plus 36, so square root of 40. Now 40 is 4 times 10, so this is going to be square root of 4, which is 2 times square root of 10 units. Let's have a look at one more example. So AB, distance from A to B, square root, difference between the x coordinates, 1 minus minus 2 squared plus difference between the y coordinates 4 minus 4 squared. Now you might have already noticed that we're going to see something a bit interesting happen here. So we've got 1 minus minus 2 which is 1 plus 2 so that's going to be 3 squared and here we've got 4 minus 4 so we've got 0 squared. So actually we're just taking the square root of 3 squared which means we're going to get a distance of 3. So really if we'd actually thought about this and again we think about what's happening here and what, what did it mean when we, we got 0 when we subtracted 4 minus 4? So remembering that this here, this 4 minus 4, is the difference between the y coordinates. That's the vertical height of my right angled triangle in Pythagoras that I want to use for Pythagoras' theorem. So what we've found is that we have no vertical height. So in fact, if we had actually thought a little bit about this problem earlier on, we actually have um, two points with the same y coordinate. So we actually don't need a triangle at all to find the distance between these points. We're finding the distance between the points 1, 4 and negative 2, 4. And because they have the same y-coordinate, there's no need to use Pythagoras' theorem. It's just a direct distance from negative 2 to 1. So actually, if we'd given this a little bit of thought before we'd embarked on the problem, we didn't need to use the formula here at all. And in this example, we have um, a slightly different uh, focus here in that we're trying to find the y-coordinate of one of the points and we're given the distance. So we're told that the distance between the point negative 1a and 3, negative 2 is 5. So find A. So this isn't really any different a problem. So it's still making use of your same formula. It's just a different combination of information. So we know that the distance between two points is the square root of the difference between the x-coordinates plus the difference between the y-coordinates. And so we know what the distance is. So I'm going to square both sides just to get rid of that square root. So 25 is equal to negative 4 all squared is 16 plus a plus 2 all squared. Subtracting 16 from both sides square rooting both sides, remembering that the square root of 9 might be positive 3, but it also could be negative 3. Oops, apologies. And then subtracting 2 from both sides, so negative 2 plus or minus 3. So negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1, and negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. So we found two possible values for A. So I just want to have a think about... Um, why that might be the case and what's going on here and is it feasible that there be two solutions in this particular problem. So let's just think about the information that we've got. 
So we've got our point three negative two. So three negative two is here. And we're trying to find a point that is five units away from here, a distance of five away from this point. And we know the x coordinate of that point. So it has to have an x coordinate coordinate of negative one, which means that it's going to have to be somewhere along this line here where x equals negative one. So we're trying to find a point that is a distance of five away from the point three negative two and lies on this line where x is equal to negative one. So we found that in fact there are two possible points, the point negative one one, so where a is one, so this point up here, and also the point negative one negative five, so this point down here. And you can see why that makes perfect sense. There are clearly going to be two points with that x coordinate that are a distance of five away from the point three negative two. So it's quite feasible here to have those two solutions and both are per perfectly valid in this particular problem.